Third and last video of our ATPL series today, it's about changes. Welcome to QS Wings, the YouTube channel. So let's go over quickly that what we spoke about so far in the first two videos. In the first one, we took the ATPL as a license with its privileges and requirements and other small details with comparison with other um, ATP United States FA version and the ESA version, which we'll be going on. In the second video, we went over the courses for ATPL exams one by one, making short descriptions and hitting some small examples about them. Now the third one is coming up. So this third course will be about ESA's changes on ATPL theoretical training as a whole, as starting with 2022, January 30th. Uh, the reason is going without saying, Aviation is evolving, improving, and changing. So one of the world's leading aviation authorities, ESA, have to keep up with these things to train with these train and test their pilots. They used to receive some critics as well. So most of the items, according to many pilots and surveys, uh, in in those courses are to be according to uh, to my notes in here irrelevant to an, to actual airline operations. Also, some of them were outdated, like um, Loran C, which is a old navigation system, was still within the questions in 2013, according to what ESA themselves said. Uh, they also said, uh, according to the reasons for these changes, um, there wasn't any significant, there was some changes, but significant ones uh, were not there since 2006 in terms of learning objectives and the syllabi so that's one of the reasons they wanted to apply some changes it's not a full mentality change the system still is there courses are there exam system is more or less the same but there are some new things which i'm going to address in a second although there are not too much changes like i said they can be summarized into three items Updates on learning objectives, both for exams and the courses. And these learning objectives are the basic ideas behind each and every course. They are the aims of teaching for these courses. Second one, it says new concept called threat and error management. I don't think it's new, but um, I think the application and the melting of it into each and every course uh, is somehow new. So threat and management, threat and error management. I'm sorry, will be emphasized more on each on these courses. Practically speaking, I think it's important. Third one, the subject uh, area 100 KSA, aka knowledge, skill, and attitude, which will be separately certified. I'm going to come to that in a second. For those, by the way, who are interested. Uh, ESA has a nice 21 page booklet uh, regarding to these changes titled Explanatory Note to Decision 2018-001 Romeo, which talks about uh, summary, well, actually more detailed, uh, about the reasons of these changes, which I'm trying to video about, explains the new concepts, and briefs the new learning objectives about the additions actually every single course I think it's comprehensive it's a little bit of lawyer style but it's a nice text and when you are not studying and just kind of curious about what's going on behind all these things it gives you a good idea I would recommend I think the biggest portion of those changes we mentioned are coming from the uh, area 100 KSA uh, knowledge skill and attitude subject uh, not only because it's a separate subject, but also it being a prerequisite to be legally able to take the exam, the 13 exams. Um, it will be not included by the syllabus by an item, but it will be additionally assessed by the ATO, approved training organization, where we get the lessons. And certificate has to be given by them. So if we don't get the certificate, we, go, we won't be able to take the lessons. So how is it going to be? I'm going to make a short quotation from the explanatory note to decision 2018 I mentioned. Just a small phrase. I think it's self-explanatory. This new set of 
learning objectives is grouped by appropriate IKO core competencies with the extra addition of knowledge. What are these core competencies? By the way, let me quickly go over them. Um, communication, leadership and teamwork, problem solving and decision making, situational awareness and workload management, as it says here. I'm going to keep on reading. Um, the inclusion of these learning objectives does not affect the examination system based on the ECQB. I'm going to come to that. It means uh, European Central Question Bank. Because they are not proposed to be included in the final theoretical knowledge examinations conducted by the competent authorities. However, ATOs, approved training organizations, should assess a student's ability in each of the Area 100 KSA learning objectives, because it has its own learning objectives, before they sit their final theoretical knowledge examination. It is proposed that ATOs incorporate the Area 100 KSA learning objectives into their course design, and these are covered and assessed during theoretical knowledge instruction phase through practical training and assessment. This could include planning, scenario-based and simulated exercises or assessed discussions, interviews, projects, essays and presentations. I don't know what is it going to be practically, but it's better be prepared that something slightly unconventional that we, how we are used to study um, throughout our courses. I don't think it's going to be rocket science and these guys are not trying to fail us for anything. Um, let's let's think there I mean um, they're in good intentions of making us better pilots so let's respect to that let's be open to what they're gonna teach us just saying some quick general knowledge thingy uh, all these questions of the exams coming from ESA starting from PPL to all the way to IR CPL and ATPL they're all coming from the same question bank, which is European Central Question Bank, ECQB. Uh, they're like a 10,000 question bank, as they say, and they're replacing the old questions with new ones with a number of 1,200 in each year or something like this. I'm not so sure. I think this concludes our three video humble ATPL series. I hope I could give some rough idea about what the whole thing is. Again, we should remember two things. These questions as well as the courses are there to make us better pilots, not to fail us or eliminate us, reduce numbers or anything. Um, I believe in the sincerity of these people working hard to prepare all these systems and uh, learning objectives and everything. So um, it's better to keep this in mind while studying. We're not, these are not there to be passed. These are there to make us better and solid pilots for the like 20, 30, 40, how many years it is. Uh, for our future. Good luck for your exams and good luck for your career. Hope to see you next time. Peace out.